I'm Dennis Shem, the councilman in Westfield. Okay. Uh, I live here almost 20 years. Okay. And it never happened. How, how big is the Richfield? How big of a town is it? We uh, approximately uh, uh, a little less than 12,000. 12,000? Yeah, people who live here. Oh. And you're a councilman? I'm a uh, councilman. Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, like six years, which is the two terms okay. until today, until this year. Uh, this town is put in population has grown up very fast. Very fast. Yes, almost so we have 40% Korean population. Korean population. Yeah. That's correct. A lot yeah. of businesses. And, uh, and also, uh, almost we have 600 businesses mm -hmm. all together. Right. But you know what? This project itself. Tell me the project. What is the project? Project itself really good, but location wise, this is not the location. Okay. It can be built up. I live right right up there on the hill. All the wind, wind the, the blows, it comes to my house. I don't want to die young, you know. That can be effect to this area huge. Why they they are selling the power to other place? Why we gotta be a victim? Right. Which is not fair. Where is the pl the plant? Where is it planned uh, to be? What location? Right, right there in North Bergen, like okay. one mile, one, one mile, mile away. From here? Yeah, mm -hmm. from here, my, my, here. You're above it. Yes. Pretty much. So, mm -hmm. you know, there are many spots. It can be built up. Mm -hmm. Not this area. Mm -hmm. This area I like to have clean and really, really nice. 100% pure environmental situation. And the community, the uh, Korean community is very aware of what's going on? Pretty much everybody, mm -hmm. the, you know, uh, worrying about the plant. Mm -hmm. Can be built up sooner, but uh, it's too early to come out for this rally. So, uh, right. I don't see, you know, many Koreans here. Maybe but a little later. A little later, yeah. it'll be okay. But everybody worrying about their health, mm -hmm. the kids, the school, how they sell. They, they, that's the main thing. Okay, Councilman, thank you very much. No problem, okay. thanks so much. Now, Councilwoman, Hello. Hello. You're Councilwoman for, from Richfield? From Richfield, Warren Larkin. And how long have you been uh, a resident of uh, Richfield? I'm a lifelong resident. I grew mm -hmm. up in Richfield and I was appointed to the Council in June. Okay. And Richfield was the first town to pass a resolution speaking against the power plant in North Bergen. And it is, it's just a bad move. The power is going to supply New York City. It has no benefit to New Jersey except pollution more health issues. It's just a, a really poor idea and it's gonna be in our neighbor right next door. And they're gonna have 300 foot smokestacks and it's just gonna be such pollution. How big is it gonna be, do you know? How many megawatts? Uh, that I'm not sure. The mm -hmm. other folks here from Food Water Watch and the Sierra Club. They're they gonna give some details. They can give you all the particulars on that, but over the past 20 years, the Meadowlands have come so far in improving. We have nature back and animals. And this will only destroy everything that they have worked so hard to protect. There's a mobilization at the level of a town and also surrounding towns against this project? A few towns. Uh, Leonia is going to pass. We have about 16 towns that have passed resolutions. And once their mayor and council hears more about it, they're asking our mayor for our resolution so they can also pass the speaking out against it. Do you know what the timeline is where, uh, before they break ground to install that plant? Or is it just in a, in a planning all, stage right now? Right, right now it's a proposal. They've had a, a couple of permits. Uh, but we are trying to get Governor Murphy to reject this plant. During his campaign, he promised New Jersey renewable energy, and this 
to nowhere close to renewable energy have the power plant right here. So we have to say no and reject this proposal. Thank you very much. And your name was? Lauren Larkin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilman James Contolius. I'm also the Environmental uh, Commission Liaison. Thanks to the Sierra Club and Food uh, Water Watch, um, we were informed uh, about the process and what it takes uh, to get approval. Um, from what we understand, this power plant uh, is a, a total privately funded, uh, endorsed by the uh, Hudson County officials. Um, it brings no benefit financial or any otherwise to New Jersey especially uh, the borough of Richfield and, and Southern Bergen. Um, it, it's totally for the benefit of, we have no problem against private business, but if it's gonna harm the Meadowlands, we're not allowed to develop our own Meadowlands properties, you know, to, to save the Meadowlands and to, uh, you know, not do environmental damage. And now they're trying to build a power plant right in, you know, literally at our border on the Meadowlands. On this highway, Route right Run in Nine, uh, 10 trucks an hour of oil to make this power plant run. So that's even more air pollution. So it's gonna be all fire or? In the winter time. In the winter time, they, yeah. they have to keep the electricity going. That's right. And uh, Governor Cuomo in New York State claims uh, they don't need this energy, they don't need the power. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to go through three Bergen County uh, municipalities uh, and do underground uh, electric electricity cabling and across the Hudson River to get it to a transfer station uh, in New York City. The word spreads more and more every week. Mm -hmm. uh, we're spreading the word. Uh, another municipality is supposed to adopt another resolution. Uh, I introduced the first resolution uh, opposing the power plant, and uh, it was passed unanimously by the mayor and council. Uh, other municipalities have followed suit, and um, uh, both in Bergen and in Hudson. So yeah, it's, this is the air we breathe, this is the water we drink, this is the ecology. Uh, everything's everything is um, uh, affected. Thank you very much, Councilman. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the rally in Ridgefield to stop the Meadowlands power plant. So we are going to get started with our speakers momentarily, but we are joined here today by the wonderful. Solidarity Singers of the New Jersey Industrial Council, and they have they have written and performed a few or written a few songs specifically for today that they're going to start us off with. So let's give a warm round of applause to the Solidarity Singers. Standing by the water, we shall not be moved. From war for pollution, we shall not be moved. From war for pollution, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's standing by the water, we shall not be moved. We are hands and hearts like this. We shall not be moved, your hands and nothing we shall not be moved just like a tree that's standing by the wall. Oh, 
safety, and environment of the entire region of northern New Jersey by stopping the Meadowlands Power Plant proposal. We have a wonderful lineup of speakers who are going to talk about a whole range of issues that stem from this dirty and dangerous proposal. But before we do, we're going to start with an opening prayer from Reverend Ronald Tuff. Uh, Reverend is a minister with Green Faith, and uh, we're, we're very lucky and, uh, and honored to have him here with us to give the invocation for today. So let's welcome Reverend Tuff. What do we want? Clean air. What do we want? Clean air. Let us pray. Most gracious and merciful Father, Lord God, we come very humbly first to say thank you. But now, Lord, we ask that you would touch the hearts of those that have decided to have this power plan, to let them know that we don't need any dirty air to affect our children, to affect our homes, to affect our environment, to let them know that what they're doing, Heavenly Father, would hurt the community. Heavenly Father, let them know that we would come together and that we would work together, that we would want clean air, we would want safe homes. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would touch them. And then we pray for each and everybody here. Ask that you would bless them and continue to hold them up. And we pray for unity and we pray for strength and we pray mostly for clean air. Let us say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Reverend Tuff. So um, I think next we want to recognize the elected officials who are here with us um, because of their leadership on this issue. So as, a, as an update for everyone here, we now have, and I'm going to look towards uh, Ken to, to just to make, keep me honest on this. I think we have 12 municipal councils who have come out strongly with passing resolutions to oppose this dirty and dangerous power plant. And we're honored. We're honored to have a handful of elected representatives from the town of Ridgefield here with us. But before we move to them, uh, we're also really excited that our state representatives um, in Bergen County, Senator Weinberg um, and Assemblymember uh, Gordon Johnson, are coming on, you know, on board with us. And uh, actually, Senator Weinberg has sent her Chief of Staff Shane to read a statement from the Senator and from Assemblymember Johnson. Uh, so let's welcome Shane. New Jersey stands at a crossroads. As a state, we have committed to making our grid 100% renewable by 2050. We have agreed to reduce our carbon emissions under REGI. And earlier this year, we joined the United States Climate Alliance, joining other states in their commitment to abide by the Paris Agreement. But we have a long history of missteps when it comes to our environment. Too often, we have chosen the side of the polluter under the belief that the short-term jobs or investments will be worth it. Such short, such short sightedness, excuse me, has time and again exacted a heavy toll on our water and air quality. We have a choice to make. We can choose the quick buck for North Bergen today and choke on unbreathable air for decades to come, or we can say no, not this time. No, all right. Uh, this power plant bad for the Meadowlands and a bad deal for New Jerseyans. Senator Weinberg is with you. Assemblyman Johnson is with you. Let's stop this plant now. Thank you again, Senator Weinberg and Assemblymember Johnson and for Shane for being here today with us. Um, so the next speaker I want to introduce is really the, the mayor here in Ridgefield who was the first elected representative in the first town to join this fight to uh, protect our health, protect our environment, protect our safety from this dirty and dangerous proposal. Not only did Mayor Suarez, the mayor of Ridgefield, pass the first resolution along with his colleagues on council, but he has since tirelessly worked to get other towns, neighboring towns in Bergen County to do the same. So he has been a champion from the very start and no doubt will continue to be a champion on this issue in the critical days ahead. So let's give a warm round of applause for Ridgefield Mayor Anthony Suarez. I am glad that we had such a nice crowd here and we need to get more towns to pass the resolution so that we can then go to the freeholder board 
and get more and more communities involved because I don't know if everyone realizes how bad this could be for us in the whole region, not just Ridgefield and the surrounding towns here. Um, Mayor Packer came down here from Glen Rock. They passed the resolution. We have our local council people here from Ridgefield, Dennis Shim, Lauren Larkin, Ray Penabad, um, and we need to keep this going. If you're from out of town and you have a town that didn't pass the opposition resolution, you need to go to your governing body and really implore to them as to how important this is. I don't understand why we have only about 10 to 15 towns and we have 70 towns in Bergen County that really all need to get on board to pass this. So whatever you do, make sure that when, wherever you're going, if you're in a town that did pass the resolution, that you make sure that you go to your governing body and tell them that this needs to be done now. And uh, I'm glad we got this, um, the billboard right here. A lot of people come by this corridor on a daily basis. You can see how many people live in the area in general. So we need to do what we can to help to be able to defeat this. Thank you. And we have another uh, mayor, Bergen County mayor, um, who not only has uh, joined this fight in passing a resolution to oppose the power plant, but has actually been one of the leaders on climate, you know, addressing climate change at the local level in Glen Rock, Mayor Bruce Packer. Thank you all. It's absolutely my pleasure to be here. Um, as some of you may know, not only is uh, Anthony Suarez your mayor, he's also our amazing borough attorney in Glen Rock. So it's certainly our pleasure to sign on to this important, sign our own resolution. Um, you know, I, I'm speaking for everyone here, I think, to say it's mind boggling that we have to stand on a corner and yell that we want clean air. It's, uh, you know, more and more we get to the point where we're not surprised anymore. But I thank everybody for, for being here, for stating the obvious. And, um, you know, just know that the borough of Glen Rock and many other towns are on your side. And I'm glad to hear that some of our state legislators are on our side. And we just need to keep moving. You know, New Jersey is considered one of the better states for these types of things. So let's make sure that we keep it that way. So thank you all very much. And uh, keep up the good fight. Thank you, Mayor. And I also just want to name the council members who are here um, from Ridgefield, uh, who really, were, again, were the first to pass the resolution opposing the project. So thank you so much to the Ridgefield Council for their leadership on this issue. I also see the Ridgefield Environmental Commission, who went out of their way to table this Saturday at an event in Ridgefield to help spread the word about this issue. So let's thank the Ridgefield Environmental Commission as well. So our next speaker needs no introduction, um, but he's been someone who's been on the front lines of polluting projects proposed in New Jersey and environmental fights for many, many decades. The director of the New Jersey Sierra Club, Jeff Tittle. Thank you. And I want to just say that it's great to be up here again when we come back for the victory party. All right. For my whole career, which started when I was this high, you know, we've been told, and I've been told, you can never stop these projects. You know, they're going to be rammed through by the politicians. When I was six years old, they wanted to build a pump storage station on top of Storm King Mountain on the Hudson. And I was six years old, picketing Con Ed back then. So now I'm 61, so that many years later, I'm still doing it. Power plants, and the reason I say this, in this country have been a growling cry for environmentalists from one place to the other, especially when they're fossil fuel power plants, whether they're coal, oil, or natural gas. And we're here in Ridgefield because next door is ground zero in the battle for our clean energy future, a battle between the dirty fuels of the past and a clean energy future. This power plant would cost $1.5 billion. For that cost, you could put solar panels on 50,000 roofs. So you think about the difference. You could build almost a thousand megawatts of offshore wind easily. The point is that they want to keep us addicted to the uh, to the past with, with the dirty fuels, and we're here to tell the governor because that's what this is really about. We want you to move ahead to 100% renewable, like you've committed, and you can't do that if you allow power plants to be built. You know, the governor was asked about this power plant few months ago 
when he was told they want to build a power plant up here and ship the power to New York. And he said, I don't understand. He said, it makes me want to scratch my head. We're here to scratch his head for him. Instead of scratching your head, use a pen, sign an executive order, putting a moratorium on all new power plants in New Jersey. And while you're at it, make that moratorium for all, new, for all pipelines as well. Because we know that New Jersey has the ability and the will to move to 100% renewable. And the only thing that's stopping us are these dirty power plants. So, Governor, you said you wanted 100% renewable. Keep your commitment. Don't be a flip-flopper. We don't want a flip-flop fill. We want a governor who's going to stand with us against the polluters, and that's why we're here. We want to make sure that people understand that that power plant will put out 2.5 million metric tons a year of carbon dioxide. That's more hot air than Donald Trump on a given day. Oh However, this is also an area that has some of the worst air pollution in the country. And the people here, lungs will be targeted by that pollution. We have some of the highest asthma rates. We're F level according to, the, uh, according to air quality. And all the nitrous oxide pollution from that plant will mean more asthma attacks, more kids in ER, people who have respiratory illnesses. It actually is going to mean more deaths. That's not hyperbole, that's what's going to happen, because you live in a bowl, and when that air pollution gets trapped in that bowl, it's going to affect people right in the lungs. And so we're here today to call on our governor to do his job, to stand with the environment, to stand in protecting the Meadowlands, to keep your word, because you say you're committed to reducing global warming. Well, if you don't, you're just adding more hot air to the mix. So we're here to the governor. Stop the power plant! Don't gas the Meadowlands! 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 Thank you! Thank you! And I just want to end in saying we're going to keep fighting until we win, no matter what. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, before I introduce our next speaker, I, I feel that there uh, is likely a labor union presence here, and I would be remiss if we didn't address this critical issue. This coalition to stop this power plant understands that working people need jobs, but we don't need jobs poisoning our people, polluting our, our health, um, and endangering the health and safety of our residents. Renewable energy creates 10 times as many jobs per dollar invested than fossil fuel power plants. At most, this power plant, once it's finished, will require maybe a few dozen full-time construction jobs. And that's for an over billion dollar investment. As Jeff said, with that same amount of money, we could create hundreds if not thousands of permanent, good paying jobs, dignified work building the clean energy economy of the 21st century that will leave a legacy that our kids and our grandkids can be proud of. So we want to, we want to be together on that issue that we call for a green jobs program in the state of New Jersey, led by the governor, to build that green energy economy. And we stand with our brothers and sisters in the labor movement who do need those jobs. Yay! So our next, our next speaker um, is someone who has a long history of environmental protection, particularly speaking for those who, do, who don't have the ability to speak for themselves. Don Torino from the Bergen County Audubon. So, I'm a child of the Meadowlands. I grew up there, I still live there. And anybody that grew up there and, and still lives there knows and witnessed some of the worst things that have been done to the environment. The worst crimes against the environment, against the people and the wildlife have been committed in the past in the Meadowlands. We're still paying for the sins of the father in the Meadowlands. We have to clean up the mercury. We have to still clean it up. Habitat loss, but our Meadowlands has come back to an amazing place. 280 species of birds have come back. The eagle is right over my head. There's nesting eagles. The osprey, the peregrine falcon has come back. We cannot go back. We cannot go back. And this is a giant step backwards. A giant step backwards. This is the line in the sand. We're not going to bring back the bad old days of the Meadowlands again. Enough is enough. We end it here.
Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Stop the Meadowlands power plant. Enough is enough. Stop the Meadowlands power plant. Enough is enough. Thank you, Don. So our next speaker is, again, someone with a very long history of environmental protection um, in this region particular. Uh, he was one of the very first people to get active on uh, this particular fight and this issue here in Bergen County and Hudson County, uh, Captain Bill Sheehan from Hackensack Riverkeeper. Thank you, everybody. You heard my name. I am your Hackensack Riverkeeper. And when this power plant was first proposed, when I first found out about it, I said, good Lord, we're in trouble. I, in the 21 years that I've been your Riverkeeper, I've never had to go to war with a power plant. So what did I do? I called my colleagues. I called my friends that have been involved in various uh, energy issues over the years. And I asked them for their good counsel and advice. And I want to thank publicly Food and Water Watch for putting up that billboard. Those are the kind of partners that we need if we're going to ever stop this thing. And we need to stop it. We need to stop it right now. All we want to hear about in the Meadowlands are projects that are going to improve the Meadowlands, not degrade it. Uh, we put up with that for too many years. Garbage dumps, other, other power plants. P Public Service, our energy provider, last year shut down the last coal-fired power plant in this region. Yes. They shut it down because it was no longer viable as a source of energy. And then I said, well, we're on the right track. And then one year later, I find out they want that this company, the Diamond Company, wants to build this power plant, 1,200 megawatts of power for New York City, in North Bergen, New Jersey, in the Meadowlands, not on my watch, not here, not now, not ever. Tell Governor Murphy to live up to his promises. He made those promises when he was campaigning. And we know that politicians oftentimes make promises with their fingers crossed behind their back, but this time we're not gonna let him get away with it. And we're gonna say, you want you put us back into Reggie. You made sure that we're on the right track. Well, keep us on that track by stopping this plant. When we have this kind of energy coming in now, and you know, by the time if it got if it got approved tomorrow, it wouldn't be ready to go until probably 2020, 2021. But that means for the next 60 to 70 years, that thing would be pumping out all of the pollution. For 60 or 70 more years, we would have to wait for clean air here. And I don't think that you want to do that. I don't think you want your kids to do that or your grandkids to do that. I think you want your kids and your grandkids to be able to breathe clean air. The only way we can do that is to get rid of this idea and start thinking about renewables, renewables, renewables. So thank you all for coming out today. I want to thank Jeff for coming out. And of course, Mayor Suarez, who got the ball rolling with the elected. He, he, he'll always go down in my book as one of our heroes. So thank you all for coming out. I'm going to turn it back over to Matt. So we have some exciting things coming up, including a theater performance that was done specifically for you all today. But before we do a couple of housekeeping items, has everyone, first of all, taken a look at that beautiful billboard over there? So a couple points to note on that billboard. If anyone hasn't yet done this, please take out your phone. Take out your phones now, we'll wait for you. We need everyone to put in that number. 877-814-5667. Everyone should call that number now or today at some point and save it in your phone. Call once a week. Um, they, they count new calls every week and tally them. The more people we can get calling Governor Murphy and telling him to exercise his authority to stop this power plant proposal from moving forward, the better our chances are. When you call that number, you, there's also a pre-recording that we did so that you'll get some suggested talking points about what specifically to say to the governor's staff when they pick up the phone. But that's point number one. Point number two, if you haven't yet already, go to nomeadowlandspowerplant.com. There you can sign the petition opposing the power plant. We're up to over 2,000 petition signers. We need a whole lot more. So take that website, share it on your social media, take the phone number, tell two friends about it, 
That is how we're going to grow this movement to build the kind of political pressure we need to make any decision other than a rejection of this power plant completely untenable for any of our elected officials here in New Jersey. The third and perhaps most important point is that we have that billboard for just about another two and two and a half, well, no, about three to three and a half weeks. Um, it costs money to have these nice big billboards. And so we were able to acquisition this one based on the generosity of a couple of donors. Now we want to see if collectively all of us can chip in to keep it up there for another 30 days. Think about how many people that are driving past here on their daily commute who haven't yet heard about this power plant are now learning about it and getting the uh, take action information from this plant. So if anyone is willing, we are asking if folks can find their heart to be generous enough to give $50 or whatever you can to help keep this billboard up for another 30 days. You can come see me or you can come see Paula or Ken who's wearing the gas mask and floating around here somewhere. There he is. Um, but you can make either a cash donation or a check donation. Um, Food and Water Watch is simply holding the funds so you can make your checks out to Food and Water Watch and then you would also get a tax um, deduction for making this donation in whatever amount that you can. So um, if we have a hat to pass, that would, be, that would be great. But again, you can make a check out to Food and Water Watch or you can pay cash. Either way, we can get you a tax deduction and it will go a long way to keeping our billboard up um, front and center for the people in the local community who don't yet know about this dirty and dangerous proposal. So if you don't have your checkbook on you, you can mail a check to Food and Water Watch, 100 Bayard Street, B-A-Y-A-R-D, New Brunswick, New Jersey, 08901, and it's Suite 202. Um, and in the memo line of the check, say Meadowlands Power Plant Billboard, and that will notify us to put 100% of your funds towards the billboard for another 30 days. Um, and we can, if, you, if your name and address are on the check, we'll give you an, acknowledgement, an IRS acknowledgement letter for your contribution. So um, with that said, we want to bring up the Solidarity Singers for one more song, and then we're going to go into our street theater performance. So if you are an actor in the street theater, now would be a good time to come up to the front. But let's introduce, again, with a warm round of applause, the New Jersey Solidarity Singers. Go! 
question um, about billboard costs. So it costs 2000 a month to keep that up and running. We probably will not be able to run it for a full year, although that would be great if we can find the donors. Really quickly, before I introduce our, our final speaker and our street theater performance, I just wanted to name a couple more issues about the power plant that are a particular concern. There is already a major fossil fuel, natural gas fire power plant uh, less than a mile from the site of this proposed new plant. They're about the same size. Um, the big thing is that the Meadowlands power plant, the new one, would provide zero electricity for New Jersey. 100% of the electricity generated would go under the river to power New York, so we would be stuck with all of the pollution. But when you build these two massive power plants within a mile of each other, now you're talking about the local communities here in Ridgefield North Bergen, Richfield Park, the immediate surrounding communities, Fort Lee, will get a double dose of everything from nitrogen oxides to particulate matter to ground level ozone, all of which are extremely harmful to our health. Um, not to mention it would blow the lid off New Jersey's uh, carbon budget and our climate um, mitigation goals. So th this proposal makes uh, zero, zero sense um, and it's really all about this private corporation um, and their desire to profit off of our expense. The power plant, plant company for their part is going around and telling people that the power plant is needed to meet electricity needs after the Indian Point nuclear facility is decommissioned. But New York State has already done a study. Their grid operator did a study and said that even when Indian Point goes fully offline in 2022, that this power plant is not needed. There's already enough projects in the electricity grid pipeline to make up for the energy supply when Endium Point is decommissioned. So we know this company is willing to spew mistruths um, in order to try and sell this, this proposal um, and force it down, down our throats even though communities across New Jersey are standing up against it. Oh, there's a rainbow. Very You gotta underexpose it. Otherwise, Mother Nature is with us on this one. So that is a great, um, great transition to our our final piece of today's program. Um, and to introduce that, I'm going to welcome uh, a close friend and comrade of mine, Paula Rogovin from the Coalition to Ban Unsafe Oil Trains. Hey, Paula. <laughs> Hi, I'm so glad. Thank you all of you for coming to the to this important rally and for the work you're doing behind the scenes, getting towns to pass the resolutions. Um, some of you may not know, but the oil trains that go through all of our communities here in Bergen and in, in North in uh, Hudson, in in Morris, and throughout New Jersey, throughout the country, those oil trains will be right next to this proposed power plant. They would be, we've got to stop it. They carry back in crude oil. Back in crude oil has a very low, it's very volatile, it blows up at a very low temperature. And when it blows up, it can't be put out. They call them bomb trains. 47 people were killed in La Megantic five years ago when a train carrying the same stuff that would be next to this power plant. It blew up in La Megantic, 47 people were killed. Um, the, the area near the power plant flooded right where the trains are, flooded recently. But I, I just want to say that um, the Department of Environmental Protection said everything's fine big, with the pollution, no big deal, no big deal, because just the ozone's going to be a little over the, the, required, the allowed amount. But if, if, I know many of you know about ozone, some of you don't. But it's really dangerous for our lungs, it's dangerous for our respiratory system. 
and what the DEP said, don't worry about it, we can buy credit from the companies that have closed down, the coal companies. So, we could get extra credit, but who gets the pollution? You do. We do. So it's a farce, it's a fraud, this credit buying business. Um, we're worried about the oil train tank cars. They're very dangerous. Um, they explode, they, they, they don't do the job that we, one would hope they would do. They explode very easily. So there's really not much of an option for us because the trains are safe, the pipe are unsafe, the pipelines are unsafe. So the really, the only solution for fossil fuels is? Get, keep them in the ground. Keep them in the ground. Let's keep go them trans in the ground. very quickly, transition to and, uh, renewable energy, wind and solar. So we have a street theater performance. And guess what? You're in it. Woo! You are in it. We want you to be in it. So um, let me gather our actors and actresses here. Matt, I'm sorry to say, has changed his role in life. <laughs> he is now the president of Mitsubishi, oh. which is the... Ooh. Oh, man. Did you say you were my friend? Well. <laughs> okay, so he he's the president of Mitsubishi, the company that wants to put in this uh, power plant. Well, I'm the governor, and uh, I, I don't know what to do. Should I flip, or should I flop? Should I negotiate, or should I lemotiate? I think I'm gonna flip, flop, bargain, compromise. I really don't know what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna do something because I see that and I feel like you guys are gonna make me into a villain. Yeah. Governor Murphy, I know what you can do. I'm the president of Mitsubishi and we think that spot over there, right in the North Bergen Meadowlands, you know, it's not far from here. It would be just perfect for a new fracked gas power plant. In fact, it's just grand. And these folks in Bergen and Hudson counties that you see here, they're already getting the pollution from the PSENG power plant, which is less than a mile from here, so I'm pretty sure they won't even mind if we build another major power plant. We wouldn't mind, are you kidding? North Jersey's already rated F for pollution, for ozone, by the National Lung Association. F, but that doesn't mean it can't get worse. <coughs> well, let's see. If we're going to build a power plant, we're going to need some gas to power it. Hey, we can pipe in gas that's being fracked in Pennsylvania. It's just perfect. I'll tell you what we need. We don't need more asthma. We don't need more lung cancer. <coughs> well, we're not fine. Nothing's fine about it. A pipeline leaked just last month. And frack gas? Not here in New Jersey. New Jersey's supposed to be moving to 100% renewable energy. Isn't that what the governor said? We want to see how he does the math. Here we have a plant that's going to be spewing and using fossil fuels for the next 40 years. That'll be, nine, that'll be 2062, and he wants to get to 100% renewables by 2050. This guy can't even count. No problem, you say. We're carrying bucking crude oil, the kind that explodes real easy. Bucket. That's what exploded five years ago in Lac Megantic, Quebec. It polluted the water, polluted the land, and 47 people died. Shame. Yeah, but that's Shame. probably not going to happen here in Ridgefield, so I wouldn't worry that th about the fact that these trains are going to be rolling within 100 feet of the proposed power plant site because, you know, it's just easier to bury our heads in the sand on it. So glad Governor Murphy just gave us our first round of permits, the freshwater wetlands permits for this power plant. Wetlands? What do you mean they gave you a permit? 
we got to protect them. They protect us. We got to protect them. They protect us from storms. Wetlands filter our water, and wetlands are home to wildlife. Riverkeeper has fought hard to preserve the wetlands in the Meadowlands, but we're not going to lay down on this one. Yeah, I love Meadowlands too, but name me one time that oil or gas has ever polluted an actual environment. Oh. <laughs> Mitsubishi man, what about air pollution from your power plant? You know what? I wouldn't worry about the air pollution because we got this little scheme that said pollution is not a big deal. If the plant pollutes enough, we'll just buy credits to pollute more. No pollution? For real? What about increased ozone? Ozone's really bad for our heart and lungs. And something else we found out about is that when the DEP let's Mitsubishi buy ozone credits, that's a New Jersey law. That's not an EPA law. If New Jersey wanted to stop letting them buy ozone credits, the governor could do it, but he won't. Do you want this power plant here? No! no. Hell no. Uh, you know, I'm the governor. I'm the people's governor. And I said I would be champion of the environment. I said I would be champion of the environment, but, you know, uh, champion champion. <laughs> you know, flip flop. <laughs> uh, I'm worrying about the construction from construction unions. My money, you know, we're talking money. I have to admit, I'm not sure what side I'm on, but, you know, you got to tell me what side to be on. Governor Murphy, you promised you'd protect the earth. Yes, you did, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I can talk the talk, but I don't know if I can walk the walk. You know, I don't know. You guys, you better tell me something one way or the other. Oh, oh. green job. Governor Murphy, 12 town governments have already passed resolutions to say no, so we're telling you. Thank goodness for mayors like Mayor Suarez and the town councils of the 12 towns that have passed resolutions. Thank you so much for your leadership. Yeah. Bergenfield, yeah. yeah. Fort Lee, yeah. Garfield, yeah. Glen Rock, yeah. Hasbrook Heights, yeah. Little Ferry, yeah. Munachi, yeah. Bridgefield, yeah. Rutherford, yeah. Saddlebrook, yeah. Tenafly, yeah. and Westwood. Yeah. And there are more towns to come. Let's do it together, everybody. Governor Murphy, protect the power of land. Don't say you can't. Governor Murphy, protect the power of land. Don't say you can't. Governor Murphy, protect the power of land. Don't say you can't. Madeline Murphy, we say no. Madeline's power plant has got to go. Meadowlands Power Plant has got to go! Meadowlands Power Plant has got to go! Meadowlands Power Plant, we say no! Meadowlands Power Plant has got to go! Everyone, before you leave, again, please write down the number to call Governor Murphy. Please make a weekly habit of doing it. And please spread the word to your friends, family members, to call that number to sign the petition on NoMetalLandsPowerPlant.com. The more each of us become organizers and empowered to reach out to our neighbors, our friends, our family members, you know, there, we have information that you can take from the table there that can help you have those conversations. But even if you just share the phone number or the website for people to go check out, that is how we're going to grow this movement and that is how we're going to win and we're going to protect our health, we will protect our safety, and we will protect our environment for ourselves and for generations to come. So thank you again all for being here and we are going to have the Solidarity Singers of New Jersey Industrial Union Council perform a closing song for us and this one many of you uh, here should know. One blue sky above us, an ocean lapping on our shore. One earth so green and round, who could ask for more? And because I love you, I'll be the one for tonight to show my.
Everybody give note of both.